Okay, today we're going to be looking at what is a mole? So this is a word now that we've heard in a couple um, lectures, um, but now we're going to go really dive deep into what are we talking about here. We are not talking about this furry little creature. Um, this is the type of mole that maybe you learned about in biology. It lives in the ground. Um, they look kind of goofy looking, but that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about a mole in chemistry. So basically a mole is a unit. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, bear with me here. If I said, how many things are in a dozen? If I have a dozen of something, how many are there? Would you be able to tell me how many? You're probably thinking, well, like, yeah, duh. A dozen is 12 of something, okay? 12 donuts, 12 eggs, whatever. We have a dozen of those, okay? Now, if you have a pair of something, how many of those do you have? A pair of tennis shoes two shoes, right? Again, you're probably like, well, what the heck is she talking about? It's two. Of course it's two. Um, well, that's exactly what a mole is. A mole is just a count. It's just a number, okay? It happens to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. Now that is 602 with 21 zeros after it. Now that is a huge, huge number. The thing, reason it's so huge is the thing that we count with moles are super, super tiny. Okay, so to kind of grasp how big a mole actually is, we're going to take a look at this video here, maybe, and then we will take a look at what we need to know about this mole. A mole is an animal that burrows in the ground, or a spot on your chin that you gotta shave around, but there's another kind of mole of interest to me. That's the kind of mole they use in chemistry. A mole is a unit, or have you heard? Containing six times ten to the twenty-third. That's a six with twenty-three zeros at the end. Much too big a number to comprehend. Now say you had a mole of pennies to distribute round the world Give to each of the five billion grown-ups, boys and girls There wouldn't be a single soul down and out of luck Cause everybody in the world would get a trillion bucks Or say you had a mole of paper and stacked it toward the sky Paper's all thin, but that pile would get so high You'd reach up into outer space, in fact, I think you'd find It'd go up to the moon and back 80 billion times And the mole is a unit, or have you heard Containing six times ten to the twenty-third That's a six with twenty-three zeros at the end Much too big a number to comprehend now suppose a mole of marshmallows fell upon the planet. Over each square inch of land and sea, you think that you could stand it? That layer would be 12 miles high and, of course, block out the sun. We're talking close to 5 million trillion tons. Well, maybe we could save ourselves if we all started eating one marshmallow each second. Not two, because that'd be cheating. With 5 billion people munching, how long do you think it'd take? 40 million years, and that's without a bathroom break. And the mole is a unit, or have you heard? Containing six times ten to the twenty-third. That's a six with twenty-three zeros at the end. Much too big a number to comprehend. But say you had a mole of atoms, would the pile be immense? Should I say the answer now or leave you in suspense? Well, atoms are so very, very small, you understand. You can hold a mole of atoms in the palm of your hand. So shake a little sugar in the middle of your palm. Now you don't want to spill it, so try and stay calm. You hardly can imagine and barely realize there are more atoms in that sugar than stars up in the sky. And the mole is a unit, or have you heard? Containing six times ten to the twenty-third. That's a six with twenty-three zeros at the end. Much too big a number to
Okay, so that gives us a little bit of an idea of what a mole is. So now let's look at why do we use a mole. So we just heard about how big a mole of some normal things would be. Well, we're going to look at really, really tiny things. So when we're talking about atoms and molecules, we use a mole to make counting easier. The things we are counting are really, really small. So it's so much easier to say we have one mole of atoms versus we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. We're using such big numbers in order to turn um, our amount of atoms into something significant for us as in the macroscopic world that we really need to some sort of um, unit that quantifies those really, really big numbers. So again, a mole is a unit. It's a chemist's dozen, okay? Um, one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, and those particles could be atoms or molecules. So if I tell you I have a mole of carbon atoms, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. If I say I have a mole of water molecules, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. No matter what I'm talking about, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. One mole is also equal to the molar mass of a substance. Now, molar mass is something we heard in the um, mole versus dozen lecture, and we're going to look into more. What is molar mass? Now, molar mass is the mass of one mole of any substance, okay? And conveniently, when we look at the mass of the periodic table and we measure in grams that amount, we have one mole of that element. So if we look at the periodic table, carbon, it says 12.01 grams. Or it says 12.01. If I mass out 12.01 grams of pure carbon, I know that there is a mole of atoms of carbon in that amount, okay? So then if we look at a mole of oxygen, if I mass out one mole of oxygen atoms, I'm gonna have 16.00 grams. So if I mass out 16.00 grams, I have one mole of oxygen. Now if I mass out 32.00 grams, I have two moles of oxygen, right? Because 16 times two is 32. So what does this mean for compounds? If we have a compound, we have the chemical formula, we count the number of each of the elements. So H2O, I have two hydrogens, one oxygen. I multiply the mass of each element by the count. So I mass, multiply the mass of hydrogen by two, the mass of oxygen by one, and then I add that all together. So an example here, Na2CO3. I have two Na's, one C, and three O's. I find these masses off the periodic table, I multiply, and then I add them together. So my molar mass of Na2CO3 is 105.99. Now the unit there is grams per mole, and that's really important to make sure we're marking those down as grams per mole. Ooh, apparently you're going to get the answer on something here. Um, so let's look at these. What is the molar mass of the following? We've got CO2, Al2O3 and CuOH2. Now don't take that 2.02 .02 as the answer here because it's not. But I want you to pause this video, try to do these, and then I'm going to put up the answers here in a second. Okay, hopefully you paused the video, went through the answers. Here, we're looking at a count. We have one carbon times the 12.01, and that equals 12.01. I have two oxygens times 16, that equals 32. When I add 12.01 plus 32, I get 44.01 grams per mole. Al2O3, I have two Al's times 26.98, that equals 53.96. I have three O's times 16, that equals 48. I add those together, I get 101.96 grams per mole. Then I have CuOH2, I have one Cu, times 63.55, I get 63.55. Now, the OH is in parentheses with the two outside. That means that that two applies to the O and to the H. So I have two O's times 16, that's 32. I have two H's times 1.01, .01, that's 2.02. .02. I add those together and I get 97.57 grams per mole. Okay, so you can see, very simple, follow the steps. Count out our atoms, multiply by the mass off the periodic table, add all the masses together. So now how are we going to use that? Okay, we are counting by weighing. 
So if we know that 12.01 grams of pure carbon is equal to one mole, and we know that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbons, we can kind of put those together and see that in 12.01 grams of pure carbon, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. We can use those equivalencies to convert between units like you did back in the dimensional analysis unit or lecture. Okay, so then we were converting between um, substances that we were more familiar with. Now we're going to use these equivalencies. So here's an example. How many moles is equal to 34.29 grams of NaCl? First, we're going to find the molar mass of NaCl. 1Na, 1Cl, multiply by their masses and add them together. We get 58.44. Then I'm going to use that to convert my units, just like the dimensional analysis. So the dimensional analysis, we needed an equivalent seats. This is our equivalency. 58.44 grams is equal to one mole. So I'm going to set up my t-chart. I'm going to put my starting number from my problem here, 34.29 grams of NaCl in the first box. Now I need to cancel out grams, so grams has to go on the bottom over here. So I'm going to put the 58.44 grams of NaCl down there, and that's my molar mass. Now this is equal to one mole, right? So one mole is going to go on top. My grams cancel out, and the units I'll be left with are moles, which is what my problem was asking for. Now the math I do, since this is on the bottom, I'm going to multiply by one, divide by the bottom, and I get point. 5867 moles of NaCl as my final answer. Now, I know that was a quick run through. Um, go ahead and try out the practice problems and then check in with your teacher in case you have any questions. You're likely going to need to do lots and lots of practice on these um, to really get the hang of it, okay? But right now we're just doing those one step problems using one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and one mole equals the molar mass. Remember to ask your teacher if you have questions. Otherwise, good luck on your practice.